Hello, in this Revit tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to create a simple adaptive component, which we're going to use as a shading device. And then later, we're going to export export this model, Revit model into uh, Ecotag and perform simple analysis. So I'm going to split this tutorial into two parts. In the first one, we're going to create the wall with the shading devices. And the second part, we're going to do the analysis and the uh, importing into uh, Ecotag. So let's start off by opening a new conceptual mass. And let's just uh, let's just draw a wall on the level one. Uh, actually, I'm gonna just draw a simple model line. Let's make it something like 45, 46 feet long. Select that. Make a plane out of it, let's make it 25 feet tall. If you select the plane and hit divide surfaces, we're going to place a grid on it, which later we're going to use as a basis to sort of snap our shading devices onto an adaptive component. So if you select it, I want a little bit more refined grid, so it's going to be 36 by 36. And then under surface representation, you want to check nodes because this is going to be our sort of basis. We're going to snap into those points with the adaptive component. So let's actually go ahead and create an adaptive component. Let's create new family adaptive component. And now I can do it all with just one panel when I create it. Create a sort of one panel out of five points or to make it a little bit easier and sort of save us some time by clicking away. I'll just make one with two points and one with a couple of points. The one with two points is just going to be a straight line. And with the five points, it's going to be more of a curvy panel. So let's place two points on the on the level one. Select those two and uh, connect them with the line. If you make those points adaptive, select model rectangle and set. Pick the plane that's perpendicular to the line in the vertical direction. And let's draw something that's um, sort of long and narrow. Something that's about three inches and about and about two feet. This is three inches. This is two feet. Uh, the way I'm doing is if you hold your mouse over it, it highlights, but if you hit tab, it lets you select either single line or the entire rectangle. So let's make it 3 inches by 2 feet. Select the rectangle first, line second, and select form. I'm going to create this sort of straight panel for us. Let's load that into the project and hit escape. Let's not place it yet. So I'm going to go ahead and create another one. This time I'm going to use five points. You select all five of them. Use the spline through. What that gives me is actually uh, I'm going to be able to create more of a curved shape panel versus the straight one that I had before. So again, you want to select all the points make them adaptive, draw a rectangle on the same plane that we draw, drew it before, and make it the same size. So it's going to be 2 feet by 3 inches. Select the rectangle, select the spline, and hit create form, and it's going to give us Sort of this adaptive component that's gonna be used as a shading device. Let's load that into our, our wall and start placing it. So, because we turn off the nodes on the kernel wall, we can actually snap to those points and create this panel. So the reason why I said I can create the same panel, the sh same straight panel with five points, is that you can actually do that if you snap. I believe we made a five, so this is gonna create straight one if you just snap them in the in straight line 
But the reason why I used the five points is to actually create some more irregular surfaces. So just go ahead, play around with those. And right away you notice that some of those panels snap on one side of the wall and the wire ones snapped on the other side of the wall. So you're going to go to level 1 for example, it's going to be easier to select. And all the ones that you think are on the wrong side, just select them and hit flip under its properties. Go back to the 3D view. And to access the previous panel that I loaded in, just drop down the families, generic model, adaptive components. And I believe the first family I loaded in was the straight panel. And this one is built out of two points, so you only have two points to snap. That's why I prefer to use that one versus the five point panel to create the straight lines. So just go ahead, play around with that, and once we're done, I'll show you how to export it and then import it into Ecotank in the second version of, uh, of this tutorial. Alright, once you create your shading devices and you're pretty happy with what you have right now, uh, before we export, it's important to select the surface and uncheck the surface display. Uh, the reason why I'm doing it is that if we were to export it with all the divisions so uh, visible, Ecotag will recognize it as a, as a bunch of lines intersecting each other and will import it in just lines. And we actually want a, a plain surface to sort of perform analysis on. So we're going to treat this surface as, a, for example, a window, and these are sort of shading devices. Um, so once we do that, we want to just go ahead and export into a DXF file. Ecotag is able to uh, import it in a DXF file. So let's export this DXF file. It's called a DXF export 04. And once we have that, let's open up an Ecotag analysis program and in a second video tutorial I'm going to show you how to import it, prepare it, how to load weather data fail files, and finally how to perform the, the quick sort of analysis 